Okay, so let's let's get started. Um, welcome again to to everybody. Um, I'm I'm pleased that you're that you're here. I'm I'm basically I'm like the person between you and your deserved weekend. So I. Trying to make this um, this session as interesting as as possible, and I also invite you very warmly to participate in the session and ask questions, um, so that I can you know accommodate what I say and what I present to to your needs as well. You know, so I'm here for you in within the next one and a half hours, and so you you please uh, make the best best use of this time as well. So um, before I, I introduce myself and the organization I'm from, I just would like to um, give you, hang on, I give you just an overview what to expect from, from this um, from the session and I'm just trying again to share my presentation with you because obviously that didn't work right now. So I'm trying to, to double click on that, that you don't only see the starting, the starting slide. Okay. So here we, here we go. So will you be an evaluation expert? Um, after the session, I'm sorry, you will be not. Not even I would consider myself being an evaluation expert because that's really a, a big, a big, big task, and you always learn on on the run and on the on the certain project. So don't expect to have something ready to start with when we when we end the session what i would like you to do or what what i would like you to take away during the session is that you rather be able to ask appropriate questions on your journey towards a more in, impact oriented um, work than having already some some fixed answers because it's you know it would be dangerous if I gave you like the, the a fixed answer right now because everything you do when you look at the uh, um, the the outcomes and the impact of your work will be very specific to what you're doing and in what environment you're working so the thing I would like to do is just to provide you with a certain mindset and what, what I said, certain questions, how you and hopefully your team as well can address the idea of how to um, achieve more impact and impact um, impact orientation in the daily work of your organizations or your or your programs. So um, Basically, what is impact orientation? Um, um, that's not a term where, that has like a solid def definition that works for everyone. So I would like to provide you with the, the def definition we're working with and subsequently with the de definition of what is impact orientation. So what, what kind of management idea are we looking at when we talk about impact orientation? Why is that? important for you why should you bother and um you know it's you know to deal with all this monitoring and evaluation stuff it, it is really cumbersome it's it's a lot of hard work and so you should have a good reason why you really why why you deal with that and i'm trying to provide you with some ideas why for nonprofit organizations as well as organization uh, as, as museums it might be a, a helpful approach to look into this um, this benefits of impact orientation and then we are changing over to a little bit more um, practical orientated part because I want to show you what are the different steps within a, like a program management circle you have to address in an impact oriented journey. And one of the first things you have to do, of course, is to know where do you want to go or where do you want your program to, to end up or what do, what do you want to achieve for, for your target group. So setting objectives with a focus on social impact would be like one of the first things you do with, um, you, 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 you have to do with your team to get started. And then um, I will give you a very quick run through um, tools or 
instruments, however you want to call it, to measure. And I put this measure in inverted comm commas, and I will tell you later why I did that. Because you know we we are not very happy with the with the term measure because it suggests a certain approach to something. What is really um, what is really um, difficult to what is really difficult to measure ex actually so but so these are the the different points i would like to to cover in the presentation and before i start i just would um like to introduce where i'm from and um like the organization i'm from and who, who am i probably probably as well because um, you have to deal with me for the next more, more than one hour. So who, who is the person who's talking to you? So I'm working for an organization um, that is based in Berlin. It's called Fineo. We are a nonprofit organization ourselves. We do, um, so and our aim is to strengthen civil society in all the different aspects that they are by encouraging or nonprofit organizations and their programs to work in a more impact oriented manner we do that by providing them with um certain with certain tools and certain help i come to that um in in a minute and at the same time we try to showcase the success from the social sector because we think you know beside politics and economy the the civic sector or social sector how you want to call it it's like the the important the important force and the important power that shapes society and quite often it's a little bit neglected and people who do like amazingly good work in this in in this sector sometimes are not that able to show the results they do with their their work and we try to change that by highlighting best practice by uh, examples by highlighting impact that is generated by nonprofit organizations in order to um to just put it just put more of a of a spotlight and the emphasis on the benefits we get from 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 the social sector so uh, we do that by um what I already said, we, we create, create and distribute knowledge. So what we do exactly for nonprofit organizations, and I will um, give you, provide you with a couple of links at the end of the of the presentation. We um, we write like handbooks, we have a learning website, and so on and so on for nonprofit organizations who are interested to improve their monitoring and evaluation, their fundraising skills, and so on and so on. So we do that for free and um, hope to be to be able to support non nonprofit organizations um, through through that. Then what I also already said, you know, we try to feature best practice examples in the social sector, not only because we want to highlight certain organizations, but because we always also think that talking about best practice is a good way to improve the work of the social sector in, in, in general. We do agenda setting as well, especially when it comes to transparency. We think like talking about what's going on in the, in the social sector when it comes to financials, when it comes to governance, but also when it comes to um, the achievement of nonprofit organizations is very, is, is very crucial for the advancement of the social sector. And so we do agenda setting by um, public, public, publicizing research studies and and so on and the last but not the least thing we're doing is we work with so-called social investors so this are people and institutions that support the the social sector so um that can be like um wealthy individuals but mainly it's foundations or it's companies who um do um do good with via their um corporate corporate citizenship um, agenda and we help them to co-work with the nonprofits they are supporting in a way that both of them um, benefit benefit the most. Okay, so and me, just about me. Who um who who am I? So I'm working for Fineo for almost 10 years now. That's 
that's impressive even for for myself and before i worked actually in the field of um, political education that's a bit what um leonard um, Schneiding talked about yesterday that that was the kind of work i was doing you know working with school kids and you know working on uh, issues like democ democracy um understanding and um, the european integration process and so on so i'm a little bit familiar with some of the programs that are run by museums um at, at the moment and i know how it feels like to do to do this work on the ground so and now but now i'm a, like a specialist for impact orientation for organizational development for monitoring and and evaluation yes and i'm trying my best to give you as much of my knowledge as possible and um please you know sometimes you know just just try to drain everything out of my brain you can by by asking questions you know i i tell you what i think is important but probably your questions are even even more important and just <clears throat> you know just don't hesitate to um yeah to to, to share with me okay so just for for the technical aspect i see that there are already three people who want to join the, the panel. What I would like to do is that I proceed a little bit in my, in my presentation. And then when we come to the first, um, um, the first part of discussion, then I would, I would invite you. I think that's the best. Otherwise things get a little bit, get a little bit confused. Okay. So. What is social impact? What is so impact orientation? Um, some some dry definitions are awaiting for you now at the moment. Um, but I think it's really important that you know people are on the same page when they talk about social impact because um, when you just and that's just like the first little little exercise I would I would um, ask you to do you know when you sit back for just a couple of seconds um, and i leave you alone and let you let you think a little bit yeah and close your eyes and think what is the organization i'm working for what is it here for what is our purpose why do i why do i get up every morning what is it that that makes me feel engaged to what my my organization is doing what is what do i value and what is most important for me just just think about that for a for a second you don't have if you want to you can type it in the chat but you don't you don't have to do that just just try to to reflect a little bit So I would um, suggest, and I, I provided, or I, I put a question mark there actually, but I would think that, as I mean, as you're working in the field of museums, and that's, I mean, that's part of the, the, the civic sector, it's most probably because you do that because you want to achieve some impact with what you're doing not knowing already what impact is but you want to you want to do something you want to do something good for your audience for your target population probably for your for your community as a museum you probably have a lot of different tasks at at um on your table at the same time you have to work in preservation you have to manage exhibitions and so on but you do that having a goal in mind and my impression would be that this goal is that you want to that you want to do something good or something valuable for for society and when you when we know when we now look at it and think about what what do we mean by by social impact um i would just ask you first of all to be 
careful about not mixing up terminology. It's, it's a bit um, annoying, you know, to have to talk about terminology at about so, so much, but thing, the thing is, you know, in the field of monitoring and evaluation and in the social sector, people talk about social impact a lot. And interestingly, a lot of people mean different things by that. They all go in, like, in the same direction. They, um, they try to say the same, but it's like same, same and different. And it's still there like the nuances that matter. And they matter specifically if you have to be precise in communi communicating about what um, you understand um, about, or what, what your definition of um, social impact is. For example, if you have to fill in some application forms for a grant or something, always be careful what is there be behind you know what the meaning behind the different terminology is because different institutions um, may use the words outcome output result impact in a little bit different way it, that that doesn't matter and that does not change the con concept it just changes the way people talk about and you want to make sure that you're on the same page and you um talk about the same thing and what i'm doing now is so i'm presenting you with the so-called um input output outcome impact methodology um that's that's a logic model we're we're working with there are other mo logic models as well that that are slightly different, but I think that gives you a clear or a pretty good idea, you know, what we're talking about using this, this different thermino terminology. Okay, and there you have, and I hope you um, enlarged your presentation, otherwise you, it might be a little bit difficult to, to see what is written in this, in this logic model. So you see it's basically, I mean, it's like a kind of like a flow chart, so it, um, it moves, it suggests there's like a timely de a development in time of certain, certain aspects. And what we do is that we, we start with inputs. That, mean, that means who or what is it we put into our organization or what is it we put into our program to make things happen. That can be our... The, the, the team who is working for the program, that can be the money that goes into the program, that can be educational material, that can be like in a museum, that could be like a special um, exhibition targeted for a certain certain audience you're running your, your program with. Yeah. So it's um, it's usually um, it's everything that you what you invest into a project that can be it can be collaboration as well. At what points do we work together with other project partners? So that's all that goes into the project. And that's what is usually that's called input. And what does input do? It produces output. So it produces like the first, you know, the first things you you do within within a project you know it's like the offer offerings you do to um for for your for your target group like you, you open that you you build an exhibition and you open that you um you offer a training course for teachers how to talk with their kids about arts you um write a report about a certain a certain subject you're dealing dealing with or your your museum is dealing with at the moment you know you're providing informational material you're you're doing workshops for kids you're doing probably um activities for elderly people or wh whoever and so this are like first of all like this is the first stage of outputs you have so that's what you that's what you do and um, so the second part of outputs and you see you know like the the um, logic model you know it's going down there a little bit or you know it like kind of forms forms little columns you can you can um, put that in whatever um, you know you can also make it a very long flow chart we just did it like that that for for visual reasons, otherwise we wouldn't fit that on a on a page. So, and so like this, the the second um, step of um, out of outputs is the people you 
reach. So it's your well, it's your target population, and it's your it's not only your target population, it's actually the beneficiaries. So it's the people who come to your museum, it's the people who attend your seminars, it's the people who visit your website, particularly now during, during the lockdown, it's the people who read through your materials, it's the people who are, well, benefit from what you're, what you're doing and it's very very um, necessary to look into that but at that point we are not talking about like results or outcomes yet we are still talking about output because actually people came and used your services but we cannot talk about what what happened with them up up to now so we do that in a in a next step when we talk about like the set satisfaction of your of your beneficiaries so the question is are the people happy with what you're doing are the people like content with what you're doing do they do they value it do they, do they think that it was worthwhile spending spending their their time and so it's um the it's basically what you what you do with when you do satisfaction surveys you ask people where you where you're happy with our service but when you look at it from like an impact oriented point of view, at that point, unfortunately, you have not reached like impact or out, outcome at the moment. You're still, you're still on the level that you reached a certain, a certain kind of output. People are happy, but you cannot at the moment, you cannot quite tell whether there's something like a, like a longer lasting, longer lasting effects. On the people if you want to look at that you move to the next step and that is outcomes so outcomes are the results on the target group level so that's what your visitors what the kids in the school groups who come to your museum what they do and what they what they learn so you you look at that and when you look at outcomes you always ask yourself what difference do we want to make in this certain group of beneficiaries. How do we want these people to, well, you know, it's, it's, it sounds a bit weird, but actually that, that is the question. How do we, we want to be these people different after they experienced our, our exhibition or whatever it is than they were before? Do we want them to know more about a certain subject do what we want them to have developed a certain attitude um, towards a certain towards a certain subject do we want them to be more confident for example in what they're doing and what how they're how they're dealing with things what do we want them to be a more like a more inclusive part of of society by you know being being included in this kind of, of activity. So what does change in like the single person's life who got through your program or or who, who benefited um, from from what you're what you're doing? Yeah. So did they learn something? Did they do they feel better? Do they um yeah do they well, do they have a different attitude towards towards something? And so what does that mean for people's everyday life? Do they take what they have learned into what they what they do in their everyday life? Is it only like a short term? Is it just a short term intervention or is it something that lasts for a li little bit longer? And that's these are the, the questions that are asked by um, by, by the impact orientation you know we have like a short term we have short term results and we have longer term res results and the further the results are away in a, in a in a timely manner the more difficult of course it is to 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 look at them and to to analyze them so and then when we when we when we continue looking at the at the logic model, we at, in the last step we come to the so-called impact. Um, in in this in this definition, what defines a change or a, well 
hopefully positive change on a societal level. That does not mean that a small museum has to um, contribute to um, like the society in the world as a whole, but what what changes in your community, in your, 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 your community as like a small scale society? What are the differences your organization can do on, on that level? And having said that, I think it's, um, it's important to acknowledge that we as organizations who try to to, to, who try to achieve impact or who, who try to, towards results and, and impact. We're not um, working on a, on a clean slate. You know, we're not there on your own, on, 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 on our own. You know, we are always working in a certain environment and we have to, to deal with the challenges in this environment and we have to adapt what we're doing accordingly in order to reach our goals and, and objectives. And when you when you look at this at, at the circle, you see on in, in, in the left hand corner, you know, you have the the problems or the challenges that are there in, in, in society and that kind of like drip down on the those problems and the and the needs your different target target groups have. And with your vision and your goals of your of your organization you're trying to address these these needs and you do that by by um, running programs by running exhibitions and so on and so on and so that's what you are what you can do and what you are what you're what you're responsible for and um um the the way you do it will kind of um affect the way it really it really helps the beneficiaries and the and the participants so but what happens to to um the the results on the long run it's really hard for you to well to prove or to to see because you know the the further away your your target group moves from what you what um, what you did as a program, the more of the more of other um, factors come into play. So you, it will be really difficult for you to um, to make sure that with what you did, you really achieved this and that um, change in within society. But what you can do is that you by um, that you by thinking about like logic models and so on, you can kind of like a, cause you, you you can kind of knit like a cause and relationship and say you know by what we are doing um or, to, or what we did we think we are um we are contributing to this and that kind of social change because what we see is that we achieved or we um we we achieved results in our beneficiaries and we only can or we we hope for or we are we're more or less confident that that also um is part of you know of um being being um or that that how would you say that you know it kind of like drips the, or it contributes to to um social impact on a on a community level so what what i was trying to tell you you know that it's like the 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 area you are you know you with your work can take like like a 100 percent responsibility for so so we did that so therefore we achieved that it's pretty it's pretty limited yet yeah? but so your your um your idea should be is always to be on the on the look or to 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 the what on the watch out to how do we contribute to um to um civil to civil society to our community to society to society as a whole because that will be what you frequently will be asked for and that's what what is so difficult for most of the social um organizations to well to to say something about or to to give proof um i would 
just stop here just for a very brief second and ask whether there are already whether there are already questions on on that. So and I I, I give it a try and um, let let people in, into the does it work? No, it doesn't. And um, and let people um, on onto the panel. So the first is Sophia. So I see what what happens. Hello. Nothing actually. Okay. So I, I try with with the other people who are. So I'm trying to invite people on the on the panel. So as soon as as I click on that, they just seem to disappear. I'm sorry for that. I don't want to. I don't want to make you disappear. <laughs> Okay, so in I'm I, I'm sorry. So that this doesn't seem to. This does not seem so. Either I'm either I'm too stupid to work it out, or it does not work out. I don't I don't know. So what I suggest I'm I'm sorry for that. Um, is that if you have any questions, please type it into the into the chat, and so we can can deal with that, and we make sure that that nothing that nothing gets lost. Okay, so after this dry theory, and I, I warned you, it's a bit um, it's a bit it's a bit dry dry stuff, but it's really important to go through that and have a good um, have a good understanding a good understanding for that. So. I would like to look a little bit, and I'm I'm really interested in your your opinion on that. I would, you know, having having listened to to what um, people talked about yesterday. Um, oh, th there's a question coming in. I, the, I'm, I take that um, questions about long-term measuring impact. Impact means long-term measuring. Who does that and with which resources when a project funding is over? How do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I, I grab, grab this question um, first, for, first of all. Um, so um, I think, and that's one, one of the challenges I think well, most of the of social organizations have, but organizations who are dealing with what I call, I, I'm not sure whether that's the appropriate English term, but what we call like short-term pedagogy. So you know, you most of the time you will see your visitors or the kids you're dealing with only for a very short time. You know, they come with their school, they do the program, probably there's like preparation phase, and probably there's like a recap phase afterwards but usually you will will not work with this people for a for a very long time that's different that can be different in the social sector you know when people really deal face to face with social workers say every week or something you know who who deal on issues like social problems housing and so on so you know like the connection of the organization to their beneficiaries might be a bit might be a bit closer than it is um than it is um, in 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 the wor work of arts and culture. Still, don't um, don't despair. I mean, what what you can do as soon as you have the impression that you established a, um, a program that is running on on a little bit longer term, and you're like working with target group or you're working with bef beneficiaries, for example, who can from the same well, from the same community or even the same school or something like that. What you can do is that you, by asking the people who have been um, in your program, um, you, you ask them just again, I say like half a year later, a year later, something, something like that, you know? And so you can kind of track what kind of learnings 
stayed on probably what other what other what other changes what what other changes they that there was you know you always can when you um when you ask uh, when when you work with participants a little bit closer that does not work with someone you know who's walking through your museum one time at least but for example when you when you work on a on a longer program with the with the with kids or young people or elderly people or whoever you always can pick out a couple of people and make sure that you <laughs> and that that's a representative panel you're forming and asking them whether you can contact them again after a certain um after a certain time you know that you say okay we we would like to we would like to find out you know how people you know where people ended up who were doing our programs probably kids who were at you know at the brink between school and working life or whatever we want to know that could we please contact you um in i, I don't know in a couple of months in a year or something like that. I mean, there's always the risk that you lose these people. So not only don't only um, agree on that with just one person or two persons, but um, try to make sure that you reach a, reach a, you, you you have a higher number. But I mean, that's one of the things you you can can do. Otherwise, I mean, of course, it's it's really difficult to like to do. Um, on a on the level of outcome and and impact to talk about like a long long run long run develop development in in this case so okay hang on i have to measuring impact of culture yeah so mythologies methodologies and tools um come come later just just wait wait a little bit and what about methods methods to assess causal impact so you can assess the causal effect of the project or policy um okay so we have that's that's one of the things i was about to to mention later um we have this um exper experimental approaches so for people who are not familiar with that you um in the so-called randomized control trials so these are evalu evaluations that like really measure impact um um there you have you have you have a control group so so that's a so, so that's a group that is not um, participating in the in the program and you have a um, you have a group that is participating participating in the in the group and so after that or while during the program you you measure what happens with both groups and you try to um, to compare these two groups and you know so and then you can you can um, well take talk about like the causal effects of the program with a little bit more of a certainty because you say okay this group um obviously um, was treated with was treated with our program and they showed this effect and the other the other people who did not participate in our program don't show this don't show this effect so it's pretty likely that this effects are caused caused by our by our, our program so this is um i mean that's like the high the very high standard of evaluation and very very few times this is done it's a very costly method of evaluation sometimes it's done in development work you know so like the really large um, programs ran in, in countries sometimes do do randomized control tri um, trials honestly i don't i don't know about an example in like the work of arts and museums that that happened but i might be might be i might be wrong um but i i i haven't seen i haven't seen that so but what you can do you know if you i mean with some certainty you you want to to link the your pro program with the with the effects you see i mean one thing is that by you know setting up the tools in a in a way that you ask your your participants what do they what they think about you know what do 
how much they think that the effects of the program really created the, the effects on, on them, you know? They, they, because I think they, they are pretty able to, to, um, to figure out, you know, what caused effects with them and what, what didn't, you know? I mean, they might say, well, um, I, do, during that time I learned this and that, and I definitely did do learn that via this program. And they, but they also could say, well, you know, actually, yes, I learned that, but I mean, the program was helpful, but I also attended, I don't know, another program or some of my friends helped me or I just got some input in school about this and that. And so, um, you know, by, by figuring out, um, by figuring out that and asking your participants, you know, how they, how, you know, how they judge the influence of a certain program, um, you can get a little bit closer to, um, you can get a little bit closer to, well, I wouldn't call it proof, but being a little bit more certain about what, you know, the cause, causes and effects in your program. What you also can do is that you ask other other people, you know, people who probably have the comparison. For example, if you have kids running, um, uh, you, you, you run a museum's educational project for kids in a, in a school. Ask the teacher um, what differences he sees in this kids compared to some of his other kids he's teaching who do not attend this program. You know, that should also should, um, that also should give you some, some, well, evidence or something close to evidence um, that, uh, that helps you with that. Could I answer the question? If not, just, um, just feel free to, to continue, continue asking. Okay. Okay, the Finio Navigator considers those designs anything specific for museums and art projects. Hmm. You know, you know, you, you know what I think about that. So um, I think there are specific, well, some things specific to um, the work of museums and art, art projects. Still, I think the questions you ask and the frameworks you use, of course, you have to adapt them probably here and there, but that's the content. You fill them in and I will try to, to show you later what I mean by that, you know. Still are, I guess, more or less, more or less the same. I don't think that there is a evaluation or like an approach of impact orientation that is specifically and only designed for, <clears throat> excuse me, and only designed for arts organizations. You know, the, the, um, the frameworks we, we suggest, and it's, I mean, it's not, not only us, you know, it's like just what the, what the world of ev evaluation suggests that frameworks are pretty pretty flexible to be filled with with different content and that can be like that can be social projects that can be cultural projects that can be um, educational projects because it's you know it's the matter the, the matter it is you know what what questions you ask within um, within the within the framework and you do that of course you do that specifically to your certain program and to your and also to your certain um, societal or, or, or um, uh, the, the certain needs in your community. You know, you fill that very individually. What you with what you want to achieve and what are the needs you're you're addressing. But I come to that. I come to that later. Okay, so um, when, when you look into the chat, so there, there are people who share some, some um, practical, um, some, best, some best practice from the Oakland Museum of California. And so um, one thing what, what, what I did is <clears throat> at the end of the presentation, yeah, and, and, and you, do, and you do, get, do get the presentation, I have like two pages 
with um, resources and further reading. And in there, um, you will find a lot of best practice examples. You find, um, you find a lot of tools and so on. Um, so, so that's just for, um, for further reading. So I had an, um, so, so I have another person popping up on the panel. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, hi. No? <laughs> sorry, you're on the panel. No, I, I'm really sorry. So, okay, sorry, sorry for that. So, okay, so let's let, let's continue. We co covered already quite some some things. I was I was to, about to say to say later on. So, <clears throat> what are what are the challenges of social impact in the work of museums or in the in the work of of art organ organizations? Um, <clears throat> Don't, don't worry, Victoria. So actually, we should have people on the panel. So actually, I should um, encourage people to to participate on the panel so that we also that we not only um, read from you, so that we also also hear from you. But anyway, I just I just continue on. So um, why um, why is social impact in the work of museums so challenging and and is it more challenging than it is in other social organizations? And I, I honestly, I don't really know because I have the impression to whatever area in social work or um, cultural work I talk to, everyone claims that it's specifically difficult for them. <laughs> so, so I think yeah, I think there are challenges absolutely that have to um, be addressed. And one thing is what what we talked about earlier. You know, you compared to other to other social programs, most probably do not deal with your participants for a very long time, and that's a that's definitely a challenge for for impact for for, for evaluation for impact evaluation and tracking the the results of your work and you just have i mean you you just have to try to do to do your best and you know find find proxies to get as close at the, um as possible to um to learn the things you you, you want to learn and you also, I mean, but that's that's the case for every social organization, you know. You you um, work in so many well, you, you work in so many different communities and and in environments. You have so many different um, approaches, and you have so many different you know subjects you're working on. You know, so you have natural science museums, you have art museums, you have history museums, you have uh, museums that talk about a certain, um, I don't know, certain uh, certain people and their history. You have um, you have um, museums that talk about um, you know how how technical things um, developed over time. You have something like memorial sites. I mean, they could, could would in my, my opinion, this are this is a kind of museum as well, which should we should um, we should focus on. So and so there are so many different different. Um, issues and so many different you know fields you're, you're you're working in and then at the same time you have so many different target audiences you don't only have i mean you have the people who who usually come to your place and you who you know um who usually visit your museum then you probably have to um then you probably have people who who, whose idea is not to come to your place because not because they want to be, but just because it's you know it doesn't come to their mind that they should that, that they could go to a museum for for a change or something like that. So you have I mean so you kind of you have you have the car, target group you're already or you have, working with and then you have a target group you probably don't even know what actually their their needs and interests are so that is very very challenging because you kind of have to build an interest for your cause you have to build an interest for for the 
for the arts and everything that is, you know, and everything that is that that is around that. You know, that, um, when you do political education, um, you have to, you know, build an awareness why that is why that is important, um, and you have to, you know, you have to make a stand and communicate why you think that you're serving a need. Your target group probably does not realize yet that they that they have a need um, for that so that's um, I think that's really um, that's really interesting and I you know that like came to me yesterday more more and more clearly that it's you know you're not like a organization that's for example you know providing shelter for for homeless you know the need is very obvious you know for for the for the people themselves they're homeless they need shelter or for someone who's hungry they need food but for someone who is not engaged in well say like cultural discussions or po political political education um, they don't necessarily feel feel the ne necessity to to do that so you're kind of like you're building a market and you do that by looking very carefully at what the needs in your in your certain community community are and i only can um invite you to what you're what you're doing right now that you um that you the, the the conversation you started that you continue that you do i mean what what just happened in the chat you know you share best practice you share you also share worst practice by the way you know you you tell you tell each other what did work in my organization what didn't work um what approaches did we use um probably other people other people can contribute contribute as well so it's like um learning it's it's learning on the run at the same time i think they're already you know when someone in the chat yesterday um provided a link to like the the museum the museums of impact in finland so that is um what i understood that they they're developing a framework on um on well measuring or um managing the the social impact of 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 museums so these are things that are worth to um look out for and that's these are things by the way that i have you know in the in, in this in this resource list i give you at the end of of the presentation you know there's a lot of this in there so you know um um it's it's worse to look around and it's worse of you know, not only looking at the first three things you find in Google, but also um, digging a little bit deeper and for especially also to use the resources, you know, um, organizations like NEMO and, um, you know, all the organizations, all, all these umbrella organizations um, you're, you're working with provide you. So when, you know, when I did my research, I'm, I'm not a specialist on, on museums, but when I did my research for this presentation, I found that there's quite a lot, you know, the, the thing is, um, the thing is, you know, the framework itself does not help. It needs to be it needs to be implied as well, and that's a, that's a pro. It's a process that is not really it's not really easy. But um, you know, I, as we we have to proceed on a little bit. I'm talking too much, and um, I just check the question and answers again. Ah, okay. Th thank you, Pirjo, for the for the link again. I think that's. I, I tried the 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 website yesterday. It was not online, or I had problems with with the computer. But I think that's definitely something we we all should should watch watch out for. Okay, so I have I have to continue on because time um, time runs. So one thing I would and you know you know I think I, I use this slide. A lot, and I actually I think it's the most important slide in the whole presentation um, because it actually should give you or it, it gives you an idea why to bother with impact orientation. Why should you do that? You know, you have so many things on your on your table. What you have to do? Why do you have to think about impact? You know, and we think that there are basically there are two main areas in which impact um, orientation can help you one is the area of 
to prove what you're doing. You know, you you know that pretty clearly. You know, you have to to write reports. You have to talk to your board. You have to talk to your to your the, the CEO of the museum and so on. And you have to give evidence about what you're doing and what you what you achieve with what you're what you're doing. And when you deal with impact impact orientation and when you try to collect data on the impact you're, um, or the results you're, um, you're achieving, it will be much easier for you to enter this kind of conversation because you will have, well, you have data, you will have qualitative, quantitative data that helps you, that helps you communicate, communicating and underlining your, your cause. And that, that is all so very, very helpful for um, for fundraising because you know more and more donors ask for um, you know to what to what end do you do these things? It's nice that you do that, but to what end? What what are, what are the, the results? Why why are you doing that? And the better you're able to um, to answer these questions. Um, well, the um, the the better, well, the more successful. That's I'm, I'm I'm not trying to promise something, but I think I think the more successful you will you will be um, you will be in your fundraising and in your in your outreach outreach activities. Okay, and then the other thing, and I think that is well in well in in my point and in my point of view and in Fineo's point of view as well. It's probably even the more important. Um, aspect of this too. Um, use your impact, use your impact-oriented approach to improve your work. You know, it's nice that you can you can provide facts and figures about what you're doing, but if you're not using this information to reflect on what you're doing, to in at, at points where it's necessary, probably change a little bit on what you're what you're doing, and always learn and get better then impact orientation really, I would say it kind of like fails on, on the halfway because that's what impact orientation is, is about. You know, it's about keeping what you want to achieve in, in mind. And if you do not achieve that, don't despair, but think again and think again, well, what, what happened? Probably we had the wrong assumptions or probably uh, we did not or our program did not run as as planned, or you know there were so many side effects that um, that um, you know that that affected the, the the results of the program. So this and that this and that happened. And you know when you when you look when you do that, when you keep, always keep your impact in mind, that's the only that's the only way you are you will be able to. Well, to learn and to be able to provide better services for your for your target audiences on the long run. Okay, so I have I have another guest on the on the panel, and um, Sarah, I, I just invite you. I hope it's I hope it's okay. I hope. Thank you. Um... Hi, Sarah. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I just I I I thought I had to do this. I, I'm just listening to what you're saying since the beginning. No, you don't have to do that. But if you if you have some ideas or, or comments, sorry, <laughs> I, I'm going out. We are, we are very happy to share that with you. Everything is fine. Um, okay, so we I I I move on because I promised you some more. Some more tools and um, some more tools and helpful and helpful things. So one thing I want to mention, and you can you can have a look at that when you um, well first of all when you when you look at the pr presentation, but then also look at the social impact framework we provide on our our website. I, I give you well the, the link comes up at the at the end of the um, at the end of the presentation. So that is basically that's a management cycle, just just a normal management cycle that what you know from project management, you know, you plan, you carry things out, and then you um, look back and you reflect what, how, di how did we do, and then you plan again, and you, and you start all, all over again. And in, in the, like, in the impact-oriented, in the in impact, uh, in, 
Okay, I take a sip of water and start again. So when you when you do um, in, um, project project management with a focus on on impact orientation, it's very important that you focus on the challenges and needs of your of your target of your target audience or your your community. And we we, we talked about that before. You know, you might um, wonder that um, you know that the the needs um, of this target group. You know, they don't like jump directly into your face you will have to um you will have to figure out you know by using i don't know um interviews inquiries um focus groups and so on you probably have to dig deeper um into what your community really needs so in order to build uh to in order to build um um a project that serves that serves the need and then consequently and then the consequent then consequently reaches the reaches the desired results and um, what the desired results are that's basically what you and your team and or with within your organization and with the participation of um, stakeholders what you set in your um, in the so-called project objectives and I jump to this slide now. And um, so that there's one slide um, you can re read through later that, you know, questions that help you to um, to evaluate or to figure out like, what are the what are the needs in your in your community and the, and the target group. And when you now get to setting your your project objective. So like the question, what do you want to reach with your project? We suggest to turn back to what we what we saw before you know you you remember you you remember this this impact logic impact model flow chart and you can you know graphic wise you can do that how however you you want you know what we did is that we kind of flipped that thing over and we turned it into like a it looks like a little staircase or a little ladder you know suggesting that you know there's what there's one step after the the other that can be reached or should be reached but you can do that how, however however you want but what what is interesting or what i think is helpful is that for every for every step of this logic model you ask the appropriate question in order to set your set the um the goals or the or, or the objectives um you want to achieve and what you do you don't start or you should not or start at the bottom at number one and start with oh these are th the things we're doing anyway but you would start at the top that's number seven and we saw in the flowchart um graphic that number seven that's the changes on on, on community level or on society level. So you, you start asking, what do I want to achieve or what do I want to change in society? And in order to do so, and then you make your way quick, um, your way slowly down step by step the staircase. If I want to achieve this, um, this change in, in my community, for example, I want to be my community more inclusive or I want to be um, my community to participate or engage more into political processes or something like that. You always ask the question, in order to achieve that, what do I, what does, what does, what things have to happen before? And before you um, have change in community, you most probably have most mo most probably it's the, it, it, it's tricky. I'm not talking about advocacy here at the moment. I'm talking about like programs that usually target um, people like like single single people in sense of um, participants. Um, so, but if you want to achieve um, community cha um, community change, you also have to achieve um changes in the life of individuals and so you think um what does what are the changes in what are the changes in the lives of individuals i want to achieve and in order to do that what does this person need to learn and in order to to learn that what kind of service do i have to provide 
Um, so that's the way you work. Um, and I'm, uh, I wrote down this, this questions in, in, in more detail. And so that's the way you kind of think about your theory of change in order to, um, in order to reach the goal that is probably very far away and that's societal um, change. And we will probably never be 100% sure about how, how far we were able to contribute with our project you know, to the to the to the actual change, but we can by looking at what happens on the on the steps on the way. We can kind of build, and that was one of the questions before. We can kind of build like a causal chain between what we do and what happens on a on a more more abstract level. So when you plan your project and you set your goals or objectives, however you want to call it, you know, you kind of think. You kind of think backwards, and then you—I mean, of course—then you're that it should be like a like a process where you have your your team involved. It should be a process where you should um, where you should have stakeholders involved, it should, and it definitely should a pro, be a, um, a process where you, when you're working with the community, you should have um, people from, from the community involved. I think that's a very important criteria for quality, the, the quality of programs. I mean, for the whole, for, not only for the planning, for, for the planning phase, but also for the other phase that you have always, you know, you kind of speak with your, with your, um, your beneficiaries or your participants and you always, you not only welcome their feedback, but you also um, take their feedback into as something you really acknowledge as a, as a important source of information and you really and you really and you really deal with with that on on the next slide and i hop through that um, i just give gave you um, a few ideas how to write down project um, objectives in order to make them easier to evaluate later um, you heard that a thousand times before, I can. I think I can skip that. If you want to uh, have to have a look at it again, um, you can. You can. Um, you can go, go back to the slide, and then um, I would like to provide you with some. And this are this are not fixed answers, but just some ideas about what does impact and outcomes in the arts and cultural domain mean you know some people always you know people ask for are there certain sets of indicators or certain sets of goals we can use for our work and for our you know for our for our measurement and i always say well actually there of course there are indicators that are more or less commonly commonly used um but it's not a good idea to take that one-to-one -one and apply that to, to your organization. You always should think about your goals yourself and what that means for your for your evaluation um, or your 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 work in your spe specific um, context. But still, so what the um, I think it's from the it's the Arts Council in in Great Britain. I think they're doing a pretty pretty good and interesting work when it comes to self-evaluation they have a tool on self-evaluation and so what they suggest and i mean, I mean it's, it's a suggestion you always can can elaborate on that or extend that or say well that's not for us but they um they recommend like four areas in which arts organizations have an influence on well on on society and so i'm not going to, into that into into detail but so they define like like four areas where um organiz arts organizations create an impact and that can be in society that can be on an individual basis when it comes to health and well-being that can be on in in education that can be as the this is as well on a personal level as on a societal level i think and it also can be um on the economical level of course i mean um arts organizations and museums are also um are also players um that 
that generate income and so on so and and who have employees and so on so that can play a role as well but you know to zoom into that and just to have a couple of ideas about what other people use as indicators and in the literal literature um, um, section i added a couple of other organizations that provide in so-called indicator sets for, for the area of arts. It can be helpful, but don't take it just like one-to-one -one and, um, and, and use it without reconsidering whether that is really, that is really something that, that, works, that works for you. Because then, you, know, you end up with something you need to measure and you did not really work towards this result, that would be pretty, unfortunate um, to, say, to say to say at least okay and now tools and methods to track to measure results so I again I put this measure into in, um, in inverted commas and that's why um, I, I um, talked about that why we do that because you know measuring impact means like in a, in a strict sense it means um, Doing a randomized control trials, and that's not what, well, that's not what re we recommend. And I mean, it's it's a, it's a very high standard, but it's really not it's not applicable for for most of the for most of the the organizations. Okay, but how do you find the right tools and methods you can use? And I mean, there's there's a lot out there. Most of the things you will see again and again. So we, you will probably you will um, think, oh, a questionnaire again, <laughs> but that's, um, that's about it. But how do, you, how do you figure out how, you know, what, what tools are appropriate? And I suggest, and you definitely do not have to be able to read that, yeah, but what I suggest, what we find extremely helpful, and, I, you know, when, when I do evaluation, I, I use that for my work as well, you know, to use an evaluation plan and doing that keeping in mind what we said before i just quickly jump into the slide again to, to remind you um, and to ask yourself what kind of information do i need for what purpose what kind of information do i need in order to be able to improve my project what kind of information um, do i have to have to provide for my my stakeholders internal or external you know when i write my 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 reports for my for 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 the grant makers or or whoever what are the what are the facts and figures figures i need to provide what kind of information do i need to figure out whether my project is just up to date with the with the need in the community and keeping that in mind you know you you put that into you put that into the, the data collection plan or you can, you know, you can put it on a whiteboard wherever and but, you know, just collect your thoughts on that and then ask yourself what kind of information is that I need, you know, in order to communicate with my stakeholders who of them need facts and figures, you know, just hard numbers, who of them rather need a more, well, qualitative approach so probably they want stories they want um, pictures they want whatever and at what point do i need particularly qualitative data to make sense with the numbers i got you know because that's the thing about and i'm um i don't have the time to elaborate on that too much but you know you have quantitative um, methods and qualitative methods and usually i mean making oversimplify that you know like quantitative methods provide you with numbers and qualitative um, methods provide you with more information and you know in order to make sense to the numbers, you know, why did the number of our visitors increase or decrease? Or um, why did 70% um, of the students in this and that program said they liked it very much or did not like it so much? You know, you will, if you have the bare figure, you will not be able to, 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 to figure that out. 
you know, we in um, you will always will need some stories, some comments, some information you get from interviews and so on to make sense in order to you know in order to make sense with you know with the sheer with the sheer numbers you have and then again yes yeah, so that's um so that's just the the um what, what i what i just say you know you you always will need different different angles or different perspectives you look you look at your um, um you look at your pro project so, and the more reliable your data needs to be, you know, the more effort you have to put into a more rigorous approach of data collection. So if you just want to know whether people were happy with, a, I don't know, with, with a picnic in the park today, it's okay to ask two or three people and ask them to tell you their story. If you want to know whether you, um, whether you scale your, your educational project in, in your museum for the next, I don't know, for the next five years or to another museum or something like that, you might have you might want to have a little bit more evidence you know you want to have not only some you know some people who said something but you want to have a more rigorous approach in data in data collection so that means you have well, most of the time it means that you ask more people you ask them in a more structured manner it can also mean that you need someone from ex from external you know to lead this evaluation because you i mean self evaluation is a good thing but you know having an external evaluator sometimes adds a little bit of um well you know peer, well it's it's not trust but you know it's some sometimes you know people just want an ex um, an external evaluator from from a neutral perspective to look at to look at programs so that might so that might be the case and but at the same time of course the costs and the and the resources you put into this into this endeavor of course um of course um rise rise as well so you always think clearly about about what you want and what you what you want and what you and what you really need you know and in this you know looking back at this um this um data collection plan you will see when you after a while you, you know when you figure out we, we we do not really do something with this kind of information and it's really cumbersome to um to to evaluate that or to collect this data don't do it you know only collect data when you know when it is to a certain end when you need it to report or when you need it to um when you need it to um, improve your project otherwise it's just a waste of a waste of resources okay so that's i mean you can later you can read through that if you if, if you want to but that's just again you know what are the advantages and disadvantages of qualitative and quantitative methods so and now what i did now and i see we're running out of time i'm sorry i'm sorry that's um i put down a couple of um uh, methods you probably you probably already know so it's i mean it's it's about questionnaires it's about focus groups it's about interviews it's about collecting of collecting of an anecdotes you know and so in there like on the slides you see what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages and i basically i covered covered most of that you know the more reliable the data has to be the more standardized the, the test needs or the, the the tool needs to be you're you're using so i'm not going through see all of them but one thing i would like to draw your your attention to because i mean you probably say well questioners we do and interviews i know how to do that and um focus groups well um we probably do that as well but i i would 
kind of like to draw your attention to to one link I put into the into the recommended reading section. That's about tiny tools. So you do not always have to have like a fully fledged questionnaire or this and that. You know, when you have kids in a in a program or you know people in the program, you also can use really little tools that help you help you getting feedback from your from your audience. You know, that's about. I don't know, sticking little dots on, on the wall to like, did you like the program today or did you not like the program pro today, you know? I had a program, you know, kids also, you know, they had this this little balls, you know, with smiling faces on it and not so smiling faces on it. And they also, you know, they could put this into a bucket, you know, when they were about to, to leave the room. I mean, that's, that's, that's a tiny tool. I mean, then you can do something like quick, Quick interviews that do not that do not um, that, that are not so 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 time consuming to do. And in this in this um, in in this publication about tiny tools, you find a lot of that, and you also find a lot of that that is really participant participative you know and i think that's very important for when you want to when you want to engage your community use a tool um that is that really engages the the people you can i mean you, you also can do a quest you also can do a questionnaire but really give the i think it's important to give the people the impression that their opinion really matters and that you really values them and that can sometimes that is more the case when you know you use a more personal contact and more a more personal communication um, than when you just hand out i don't know when you just hand out questionnaires but still i'm not saying that you should not do that but you also should always should emphasize that that is something you're not only doing because you want to check on these people you know or you know you want to know something but, but um, you always should tell them that with their answers and the time they put into filling in this this questionnaires or participating in the in the interview or whatever they really help to make this program or this office better not only for them but also for for the rest of the community and i always find that the acceptance of people you know um participating in evaluation increases enormously when you when you um tell them you know that it's you know it's not about them it's not only about them and you know like checking on them but it's also because their their voice really their voice really matters um yeah so that was that was about it um i talked a lot and um i hope that there's some more there's some more questions for the for the last couple of minutes was there something very clear something very unclear should i i mean I can again, you know, I can focus a little bit on the on the different tools if you if you want to. Um, do you think now that impact orientation is too cumbersome to even think about that? <coughs> So I well I, I don't see any new questions. The question is whether that's because there are no questions or that's because um, the website doesn't show me. Ah, okay, here. Um <laughs> my, 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 okay, so the question is any um, indicative questionnaires, any direction for controlled group trials? Um, probably that's now a little bit um, stupid to say, but um, and actually my direction for a controlled group trial would be seek expert advice. First of all, Make sure why you want to do that, and then ask someone who really knows about that, and then um, and then get, get get consultation, 
really. I mean, because it's it's honestly, I I mean, the, really, the, the very few of of um, control group trials I've seen, they th that's just big. That's just really, um, it's it's a lot of work. And by definition, you can't do that on your. I, I mean, when you are. Uh, I, I assume you're you're working within a museum or a nonprofit organization. By definition, you could not do that your, yourself because um, just the qual the the, the um, you know you have to have someone neutral from from outside who would who would run who would run that. And so um, yes, share um, <laughs> seek advice and think thrice whether you really. Want to do it. You know, I'm not. I'm not talking against that. I just have the <coughs> impression in most in most organizations something like that would be really, really overwhelming. And you know, I see. You know, just to just to implement really small evaluation tools is already such a big endeavor for most for most organizations so why not and actually that's one of the suggestions i forgot to to <coughs> to make earlier start small don't think oh my god now we're going to evaluate our whole museum and we are going to work impact oriented from the basement to the fifth floor, something like that. Start small. Just pick a small. Um, it's a small. Um, take a small unit of your organization and let them start and let them share the experience and let and let them learn what works first before you engage and uh, before you engage everybody. So that's what I so what what I suggest. Also it's I think it's a process that you cannot only um, do from well neither from the bottom up or the top down. You know if if like the management does not want you to um, shift your focus on, on on social impact, then it will be difficult for you to um, for you to do so. And at the same time, if the like if the people who work in the organization are not convinced that that is something that is good for them and the organization, you will never be able to to implement that. Okay, a lot of information. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, um, the PowerPoint will be will be available. I just click briefly. Uh, okay, here. I mean, here you you will you will get the you will get the PowerPoint. The the social impact navigator is our our resource that you can print, and we also have that our um, online. So everything I said you'll find there in in better English um, and more interactive and in a better and you can go through that in your own time where basically the whole impact oriented management circle is there and you can download a lot of material there you can download templates and questionnaires and I don't know what um, so that's probably a resource to go to and then the the resources I talked about about the different about the different um, things I talked about, they will they will be there as well. It's all except one. It's all online, and you can, yeah, you can wor work your way through there. So I think you're busy for the next till the next conference. You're you will um, you will need the time to to di digest. <laughs>